Well, a victory for opponents of the NDAA. A federal judge has ruled that provisions in the controversial law may violate our constitutional rights. President Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act back in December. The move has outraged activists that say the law is so vague it allows U.S. citizens to be indefinitely detained by the military and without due process. But a group of activists sued President Obama, and yesterday the federal judge took their side. Here is part of the court order issued by Judge Catherine Forrest. It reads, quote, This court is acutely aware of the preliminarily enjoining an act of Congress must be done with great caution. However, it is the responsibility of our judicial system to protect the public from acts of Congress which infringe upon constitutional rights. So the law has been blocked, at least for now. To talk, to talk more about the case and the implications of it, Tangerine Bolin, Executive Director at Revolution Truth. Welcome to the show, Tangerine. Um, so I know that you're a major critic of the NDAA and were instrumental in helping to bring this case to court. So a huge victory for you, your reaction to the judge's ruling. Oh, I'm absolutely thrilled and quite grateful for her ruling yesterday. It's a huge boon to both journalists and activists around the world. So I'm thrilled. I still can't believe it. <laughs> um, I can tell you're, you're elated there. The court said provisions of the bill um, could be unconstitutional. Talk about what constitutional rights um, you say this law violates. So our challenge, the challenge we brought forth was primarily based on First Amendment rights and secondly on Fifth Amendment rights. So First Amendment free speech and uh, free associational activities and then due process. The judge ruled strongly on both counts in our favor, calling this facially unconstitutional, which means on its face, this provision in the law is not constitutional. That means not only our seven plaintiffs, but anyone anywhere that we consider, um, per, you know, perhaps in danger of this law could bring a case forward. It's a strong ruling. It's the strongest ruling any judge anywhere could have given us. Um, and, and what makes the NDA so controversial is how vague it is. And its vagueness, critics, like you say, opens up all kinds of scary possibilities. Um, we had one of the plaintiffs on, uh, on this case on, Chris Hedges, not too long ago. Here's what he had to say about this. It removes due process uh, for anybody who is deemed not, not just a terrorist, uh, but to have contact with these associated forces. That's not a term that's defined. It's nebulous. Um, it's quite a frightening piece of legislation. So plaintiffs fear that even reporting on terrorists could be considered grounds for being detained under this law. And the judge acknowledged the danger of some of that language. Uh, can you talk about the, the dangers of, of this kind of vague language in the legislation? Definitely. You know, one of the things uh, people tried to do when they tried to um, basically say that we were wrong to bring this suit forward, that it had no merits, is say that the NDAA is um, just an extension of the a AUMF in some respects. It's not. And Judge Forrest made it quite clear yesterday that that's not the case. Uh, this section, Section 1021, goes much farther than the AUMF ever did. It, it, it includes such vague and such broad language that it, it, it did seem dangerous to me. Um, that's why I brought this, uh, or approached Chris Hedges and his lawyers and asked that we amend this to be a multi-plaintiff suit. But it also seemed dangerous to Judge Forrest. And I have to say, she asked the government attorneys five times in court whether they could say this, you know, this isn't, essentially this isn't a danger to these people and they couldn't or wouldn't. So it really affirmed for us that, you know, this is not a frivolous thing whatsoever to any of us. There are journalists and activists around the world who are really grateful today for this ruling. So. And so the judge, this ruling is a preliminary injunction, but it's only temporary. How do you hope this plays out? And are you confident that it will play out in your favor and ultimately that you and the plaintiffs will prevail in this case? Yes. So I am confident. I think we have a really strong team. I think we have a really good case. I think Judge Forrest definitely affirmed that fact yesterday. Um, how I'd like to see it play out? Well, there are a few options, few ways that this could go. Obviously, I think our attorneys could speak to this a little bit better on the legal end. But, you know, maybe the judge, uh, the, sorry, the government will not uh, try to appeal. That would be unlikely. But the judge, the judge's ruling was so strong that there is some reason to think that the government may not appeal. If they do appeal, however, 
Um, we will bring forward a very strong case, and that will happen in, in a number of ways. We'll either keep a small number of plaintiffs, or because she ruled this as facially unconstitutional, we have the right to bring a lot of people forward. And also some new developments today. Um, an amendment to the NDAA was presented on the House floor to get rid of that provision that allows for indefinite detention on U.S. soil. So very timely. What do you make of this timing? Well, it's great timing, and I uh, wholeheartedly support just, uh, Congressman Amash's amendment. The one thing that I'm concerned about, though, is that it actually rolls us back from where we stand as of today because of the judge's ruling yesterday. Our law lawsuit doesn't want anyone anywhere around the world to be indefinitely det detained by the U.S. government with no evidence. Amash's ruling only applies to U.S. citizens. We'd just like to see the fundamental rights and liberties of people everywhere be protected. So you're saying that the results of this preliminary injunction are more favorable than the amendment that was presented on the floor today? You know what they are, and as long as we can make it a permanent injunction, we'll be in great shape. I, yesterday's ruling was amazing. We're so grateful for it. It's, it's the best thing I think that's happened in 10 years as far as ruling in favor of the people and against a government I would say has gone way too far in its attacks on our civil liberties. And so for you, um, what is next in this fight? Well, next steps, we're going to wait to uh, the government's decision on whether they appeal. And we're going to create several contingency plans. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a lot of people in the wings who really want to be plaintiffs, journalists, filmmakers, Muslim citizens in America who've been unnecessarily harassed and harmed, um, all kinds of people. So I'll be working on that end and uh, keeping up my work with Revolution Truth and all the good stuff that we do. So. There's never, there's no end to things that need to be done in this arena, unfortunately. But uh, yesterday was a boon to us, so it's, it's nice. People all over the world have thanked us, thanked us for this. All right, Tangerine, thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, definitely achieved what many thought wasn't possible. So a great day for you and a lot of critics of the NDA. That was Tangerine Bolin, the executive director at Revolution Truth.